Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be speaking to the members of the Indian Catholic Youth Movement, Manglo Diocese. I'm Toastmaster Sunita Pereira, president of Manglo Club for 2021-2022. I've been a Toastmaster for the last 12 years. Why? That's what I'd like to share with you. Toastmasters International is a nonprofit educational organization that teaches communication and leadership skills through a worldwide network of clubs, more than 15,000 in 149 countries. The Manglo Club is an important part of this network because in Toastmasters, everything revolves around the club and its members. Every club provides a learning experience by giving members opportunities to take up communication and leadership roles. We practice communication skills by following a program called Pathways that is now completely online. Pathways has different speech projects that are both interesting and challenging. We deliver these speech projects in front of club members and then listen carefully to feedback an evaluation from a fellow Toastmaster so that we can improve. We also take up short two minute impromptu speeches on topics that are presented on the spot. And what about leadership? Every time we have a meeting, club members volunteer to take up different roles so that the meeting is well organized. Each club also has a group of eight leaders for one year in Toastmasters, we refer to them as board members. And once you are comfortable in the club, there are plenty of opportunities to interact with fellow Toastmasters from other clubs by taking up roles, both in communication and leadership. Communication and leadership skills help you build your confidence and personality. Let me introduce you to nine members of my club who will discuss the three essential parts of a club meeting and then share their experience in Toastmasters with you. Toastmasters Della, Princita, and Sean will talk about speech projects. Toastmasters Yonel, Fiona, and Disha will discuss evaluations. And Toastmasters Benzita, Neil, and Bavishya will explain why we take up those short, two minute speeches. Let's begin with speech projects. The most important and integrant part of Toastmasters is the speech project. It's a journey to improve your speaking skills along with your leadership skills. Each speech project has a purpose and objective that enables a person to structure their speech and deliver it with utmost confidence and skills you already have, which in return impacts the audience. Prepared speech helps us organize our thoughts systematically, gives us a guideline to transit our ideas in the speech, prepares us to use effective language, and we become aware of connecting with the audience through eye contact and gestures, focus on intonation and facial expression. And as time flies in Toastmasters, we feel comfortable speaking to an unknown audience. Typically, speech projects start with an icebreaker, where you introduce yourself to the club for about four to six minutes. Speech projects then move on to evaluation and feedback, research and presentation, and then depending on the pathway chosen, you get to explore the different electives. Most of it usually lasts within five to seven minutes. This time limit helps us speak within a constructed time and ensures that the message has been delivered to the audience. Lastly, we have a role of an evaluator who helps us with constructive feedback and areas of improvement, which shapes us to become better in public speaking. To understand prepared speech in a better light, we have our very own Toastmaster Princita who will deliver her level one speech project from the presentation mastery pathway. The purpose of Toastmaster Princita's speech is to introduce herself to the club 
and learn the basic structure of a public speech. Toastmaster Princita of Colors and Songs. Of Colors and Songs, Toastmaster Princita. Thank you, Toastmaster Adela. So a book I really enjoyed reading and loved to bits was The Book Thief by Marcus Zizdat. And among its many wonderful contents, what stood out for me was how Death, the narrator, spoke in colors. He described events, not in terms of times or dates, but what the color of the sky was when they occurred. And sucker that I am for anything dreamy and nostalgic, of course I love this aspect, aspect of the book best, just like I loved it, and spells and magic, and magic and fantasy stories relied on music and songs to be casted. So, in death's fashion, I present to you an icebreaker. A big chunk of what constitutes the color wheel of my existence is the color amber. I associate it with my family, with comfort and loud bursts of laughter. We are quite a weird bunch, with my jovial mom, goofy dad, sarcastic sister, and good old me. What am I, you ask? Well, I'd say the apple of their eyes, happy, energetic, and awesome. Not necessarily in the agreement with their versions of lazy, moody, but kinda nice. Oh well, it's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? Anyway, they have been my primary influencers and almost all I am today, I owe to them. My schooling has been another large aspect and I relate it not just to a color, but probably an impressionist piece of art. I've spent 14 years at St. Agnes and this place has seen me grow from a shy yet active kid to a confused but laid back adolescent to a ner nervous and physics crazy 12th grader. Here, I also made a bunch of close friends I associate with a happy, reliable shade of sky blue. Along with my interest for physics, they are probably among the best things that I got out of school. The next three years were again a mix of colors, as vibrant and subtle and unique as the pretty skies of Sompura, Bangalore, where my college, Azim Premji University, was located. The last three years have probably been my most influential and defining. I went there a rigid, awkward, and extremely confused kid. But over the past three years, I've seen myself grow into a more open-minded, accepting, and calmer version of myself. And it was probably thanks to all the wonderful and warm people and the community I encountered there. Being 21, that's about it as far as my history goes. So what next? I could tell you my likes, dislikes, and aspirations. But what I think I will tell you instead are the lyrics to a song. Who are we? Just a speck of dust within the galaxy. I heard Kira Knightley sing three years ago. And that thought really stuck with me. Because, I mean, sure, I love reading, watching anime, drawing, finding new music, watching my mom dance, debating with my sister, old red buildings, coffee, cats, hugs, hats, and a million more things. I also despise nails on a chalkboard, crowded buses, sweaty days, arrogant people, cockroaches, and so many other things. But as the song says, what does it all amount to? Does it amount to anything at all? And I realized how cool it would be if at this point I could tell you my life-changing, mind-blowing conclusion. But unfortunately, that is not the case. What actually happened was that I kind of forgot about it all and went back to watching a bunch of movies, I read books, spoke to different people, listened to more music, had fun experiences, made mistakes, memories. And by the time I watched the famous scene from the movie, Perks of Being a Wallflower, with David Bowie's masterpiece playing in the background, I had begun realizing it myself. My ridiculously simple answer. Who cares what it all amounts to? To us, we matter. And so in those moments that we live, really live, as David Bowie puts it, we truly are infinite. So I aspire to live in those moments. Thank you. 
Congratulations, Toastmaster Prinsita, on completing your level one speech project. So this was just a snippet of how a prepared speech is prepared and delivered within a given time. Prepared speech has its own benefit, isn't it, Toastmaster Sean? Could you shed some light on how it has helped you? Thank you, Toastmaster Della. Uh, prepared speech, speech projects basically has helped me in organizing my speeches. I would like to share a personal story. So back, back in school, uh, studying, we have presentations. And uh, I was not a studious student. I mean, I was uh, an average student. We used to get like 59, 60, 58%. That doesn't mean that I was lazy. I was working hard, but I didn't know how to study. Okay. So I remember giving my speech and then in schools, you don't have a good way of feedback. I mean, you have feedback, but it's not specific. People will tell you, you did well, or you did not do well, or they'll just tell you so that it satisfies you, you know, but in those masters, the best part is you have various forms of feedback. You have uh, somebody, uh, uh, giving feedback for the, for the whole speech and you have an R counter who's going to count the number of hours you did, number of the other mistakes you did, okay? And then you have a grammarian who's going to, who's going to give a word of the day and who's going to mark the, the words which you used, the phrases you used and uh, is going to tell you at the end of the speech. So there are so many new forms where you are constantly growing here, okay? Uh, uh, going back to the college place, let's say you gave your hundred percent, okay, and on the stage it might be it might come up to fifty percent, but here even if you give your all, and then again you have a uh, because of the feedback session you can give your speech again, and then it can come up to sixty five percent, seventy seventy five percent. You can just grow, and it's a constant place where you're constantly growing. It's not like a one time movement where you do it for marks and then you go. It's a constant place where you grow. So that is something so interesting of uh, Toastmasters for me. Uh, yeah. So Della, uh, what is it about you? Tell me. Yeah. So Toastmasters, Sean, um, prepared speech has helped me organize my thoughts. Uh, I'm, I've been able to be more focused and uh, also uh, speak within a given time. And it has given me more confidence to deliver my speech in front of the audience and uh, also, you know, give a powerful message to them. Yeah. Uh, can't agree more. What about Prinsita? Uh, prepared speeches like Della just said have also helped me structure my thoughts and make my point clearly. Something that's uh, an invaluable tool when it comes to like writing essays, teaching science and so on. So being able to practice on your body language, speaking skills in a non-judgmental you know, zone like MTM has like also definitely helped improve my speaking skills overall too. Uh, yeah, so that's how prepared speeches have helped me in MTM. That's great. Uh, why don't we see how the evaluation process goes? What we'll do the next? Thank you, Toastmaster Sean. Evaluation is at the heart of the Toastmasters educational program where you observe speeches of your fellow club members and offer evaluations of their efforts, and they do the same for you. If you truly want to improve your public speaking and leadership skills, you must learn how to give and receive helpful evaluations. The term evaluation is described as the information about reactions to a product or a person's performance of a task, which is used as the basis for improvement, such as the evaluation you have given your peers about say an activity they organized, or the evaluation you have received from your boss about a task you did not do so well. Effective evaluation, both positive and negative, is very helpful and can benefit the giver, the receiver, and the organization at large. For the giver, evaluation given constructively can promote effective learning and continued learning through others' experiences. For the receiver, evaluation taken positively can improve performance and become a source of motivation. The entire organization benefits from evaluation in order to remain aligned to goals, create strategies, improve relationships, and much more. What do you think, Toastmaster Disha? I agree with you, Toastmaster Siona. 
evaluation is a very important part of communication. Toastmaster Yon, why don't you show us by evaluating Toastmaster Sincita speech? Normally, the evaluations in Toastmasters last for about two to three minutes, but today, evaluation will be done for two minutes only. Over to you, Toastmaster Yon. Toastmaster Princita, if I had to wrap up your evaluation in a couple of words, all I would say is it was fun, but deep. A speech one may have to dwell on to appreciate the beauty of it. Toastmaster Princita's objective for this speech project is to introduce herself and learn the basic structure of a speech. Without any doubt, you met the objectives of this project. Your speech had a good opening, body, and a conclusion. Let me highlight your strengths. You have a conversational style of speaking uh, to substantiate the way you said, what am I, you ask? Well, I'd say apple of their eyes, happy, energetic, and awesome. Not necessarily in agreement with their versions of lazy, moody, but kind of nice. Though it's a speech, it feels like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You ensure that the audience has a smile throughout your speech. And trust me, this is no small achievement. You have an art of striking a balance between obvious and subtle humor. Focusing on the nuances, what you are as a person, what you say, and the way you say it are in sync. Your tone brings out the authenticity which is much needed for an icebreaker speech. This is a powerful tool in your arsenal especially when you wish to deliver an emotional speech. I have a couple of recommendations for you. No doubt your speech is excellent, but it sounds like a speech without full stops. You need to consider having a few intentional pauses so that people can digest and relish your speech. You have a couple of references which I'm sure mean a lot to you, but the audience may fail to get the depth of it in a four minute icebreaker speech unless the references are widely known. But nothing can take away the care you take while crafting your speech. The way you play with words, for example, the, when you describe your family, we are quite a weird bunch with my jovial mom, goofy dad, sarcastic sister, and good old me. Trust me, you have your way with words and it's evident throughout the speech. To conclude your icebreaker, it has the elements of a very good speech. And in my opinion, this speech is too good for an icebreaker. Best wishes for all your future projects. That was a very interesting and critical feedback, Yon. Evaluations are the fertilizers of our growth and development, says Bob Fay from Bedstone Olympics Toastmasters Club. Learning to give feedback constructively is an invaluable tool in the corporate world. We come across many situations where we require the receiver to take the given suggestions without being defensive. This is a very important to facilitate positive change and improvement. Evaluations need to be simple, encouraging, and yet effective. Also, to evaluate efficiently, listening is a key factor. The listening skill is very essential in the corporate sector. Evaluating improves our ability to see the individuality in others and to see a person's unique point of view. Mastering this technique will allow you to identify the talents and proficiencies of your team members and assign them appropriate jobs to match their talent. And not just this, but self-evaluation is also an important aspect at your workplace. Self-evaluation helps you gain greater insights and set future goals for improvement. Feel more confident about your abilities be more valued and be motivated to learn new skills. The Toastmaster evaluation process can help you out with all of these. What are your thoughts, Toastmaster Yonel? Talking about the role of the evaluator and how it helps me in my professional life. In an advisor-client relationship, listening plays a key role in addressing the requirements and concerns of the client. The hallmark of a good advisor is the willingness to confront the major anxieties of his client. The first step to do this successfully is by listening. Now, listening seems very easy, but it's extremely challenging. As an advisor, it's important to understand if the client's thoughts are in sync with the words, focus needs to be placed on understanding the context, and attention needs to be paid to the details as well. 
just like reading between lines, you got to hear between words and sentences. Improving on this specific skill at work may be too expensive in terms of less impact. At Toastmasters, taking up the evaluator's role helps you in honing your listening skills and giving appropriate feedback to the speaker. The more deliberate you are, the better you get as an evaluator. Your growth as an evaluator is directly proportional to the higher impact while addressing the concerns of your client. Toastmaster Fiona? That's right. In professional development, Toastmasters evaluations can help you improve your performance immensely. But this is also true outside of your profession. When receiving feedback, you will get to know and appreciate different perspectives. There is a story about two children who sat facing each other with a rubber ball in between. While one child said that the ball was blue, the other argued that the ball was red. The two kept fighting to the point that they began to fight each other when the ball rolled away. Turns out that the ball was half red and half blue. Appreciating perspectives can help you enjoy a better experience. Think about the last time you asked your friend or a peer to give you feedback about a task you performed. If this friend said it was good and nothing else, it can mean one of two things. Either that your friend did not participate or analyze the task, or that he or she is too worried about your feelings to tell you the truth. When giving feedback, the evaluator must observe critically, think carefully, and evaluate constructively. When your mind is coordinated to think critically, you, you take more informed decisions as you are better equipped to weigh your choices. You can provide feedback that is valuable, strengthening your relationships. Postmasters evaluations can thus have a positive impact on the giver, the receiver, and the organization in the professional world and beyond. But prepared speeches and evaluations are not the only sessions at Toastmasters. There are also impromptu sessions. Short speeches, also called as table topics or impromptu talks. Table topics is a long-standing Toastmaster tradition intended to help members develop the ability to organize their thoughts quickly and respond to an impromptu question or topic. Simple one to two minutes impromptu speech can transform your communication and leadership skills. If you struggle with small talks or decide to give a good interview, table topics will help. Table topics typically begins after prepared speech presentation. Toastmaster will introduce the topics master who will give a brief description of table topics and then call on the response at random. Your response should express your thoughts clearly, lasting one to two minutes. This helps train members to quickly organize and express their thoughts. Our first table topic speaker, Neil Shreshta, Childhood Memories. Childhood Memories, Neil Shreshta. Hi, Babisha. So when I think about childhood memories, I think about uh, the time when I used to return home from school every day. I lived with my sister. And, uh, and live with my sister and my mother. And we used to return back at around three o'clock every day. And what used to happen was every time we used to come back, I used to remember my mom making tasty food for me. And this food, when I used to come back in front of the front door, I used to already uh, smell and make out what was going to, what, what my mom was making for me. And, and when I entered the door, I would guess the dish correctly and then head inside and then savor and have that dish and enjoy it very much. So much so that even when I used to, when I used to score badly in my exam, I used to make it a point never to tell that to my mother because otherwise she would scold me and not give, threaten not to give me the dish. So when I think of childhood memories, it's always that time that I'm, that I'm uh, entering my house after a long day at school and uh, enjoying that time with my family. Oh, do you, Bhavisha. Thank you, Toastmaster Neil. Our second table topic speaker is Benzita, Pandemic, pandemic Benzita. Uh, thank you, Bhavisha. The pandemic, I believe it needs no introduction. It was one, a very unexpected New Year's gift that we received in 2020. And it is one gift that doesn't seem to be going away. There is no return option on this gift despite what all of us want. Uh, but what I would like to see the pandemic as 
being a psychologist and having uh, gone through the pandemic as a psychologist, what I have realized is the COVID was terrible. And I cannot deny that. It has had devastating effects, but we are slowly coming back. We are coping. What has also happened simultaneously is a invisible pandemic has spread. And that is what I would take from the topic pandemic. And that is the pandemic of mental health. Mental health was already crumbling with the modern lifestyle, with the lack of ignorance and the growing number of cases. And what the pandemic did was isolate these people, push their accessibility to help uh, into even more, uh, it was a lesser chance where they could come out, put their priorities down, cut down their budget, and also took away the attention that people would have otherwise given to it. It also created a lot of hue and cry where everyone said, take care of your mental health, but the stigma avoided anyone from actually reaching out. It has been so common for me to receive phone calls where people, friends, relatives tell, this is happening to me, but I don't know if it is a mental health concern. Should I go? Should I not go? The question wouldn't come if it was a headache. You would pester your doctor till you tell, it's okay, you can take the paracetamol and go to sleep. But... Um, that isn't the case with mental health and that's definitely an invisible pandemic. So much so now that the lockdown is opening, all professionals are devastated by the amount of demand that is growing because people are also coming back and taking help. We might recover hopefully soon from COVID with vaccines, with precautions, but it definitely looks like it will take decades for the mental health pandemic that has started to recover and I would like to use this opportunity, if possible, to tell my fellow Toastmasters, as well as all the youth out here who've joined us for the recording, be kind, take the time to educate yourself, be kind and have the mind to know about your heart, to know about your health and spread awareness and do what you can. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Toastmaster Bhavishya. Thank you, Toastmaster Benzita. Neil, could you share how to, uh, table topics have helped you? Yeah, sure. So I work uh, as a mid-career professional in, in a financial services company. And uh, being in middle management, uh, what, I've, what I've come to realize is that you are expected to answer to people who are most senior to you while uh, leading people who are uh, junior to you at the same time. And many times what happens is people come to you and they ask you questions which can't put you on the spot. This happens a few times a day. And that's where table topics comes in for me. Uh, thanks to the uh, thanks to getting onto the spot and answering, uh, answering a question that is just put to you and practicing that every day. I've been able to uh, answer questions easily and, and in a way that increases my uh, self-respect among in the eyes of uh, fellow professionals. So that is some, something where table topics really has helped me. Uh, and sometimes it I, I also use my uh, wit to make people laugh and, and sometimes make a, a humorous uh, response to a question that would normally would try, would, that other people would really get flustered by. So that's what's really helped me. Uh, what about you, Benzita? Have you ha how has table topics helped you? You know, you can share something out. Uh, table topics has definitely been a very interesting section for me. Uh, it makes us good listeners. It makes us good speakers. It gives a lot of on the spot thinking. Uh, you, if you could go to a restaurant like Obas, and you know your prepared speeches are your classic. They are your gut birds, your dil kush. You prepare well, you know it's going to taste great. You're going to have it and say, no one does it like this. And everyone's going to clap. But then once in a while, you find these weird things in the menu that we don't even know what it is. And you're like, uh, let me give that a try. And it can go two ways. Either you will tell, why did I never take this before? This is even better than gut birds. So you can bomb that way. Or else you're going to tell, this is why they write it at the bottom of the menu. It's there at the bottom of the menu for this very specific reason. 
so you're going to bomb in a great way or you're going to bomb in a very bad way either way you get some action so it's definitely worth going into and uh, especially the toastmaster community is a very friendly approachable community and this is what i have seen you get a table topic and you don't know what to do and you stand there and then you get the feedback you know despite you not speaking you stood like a model you were so good looking standing out there and uh, you say a few lines they'll be like i never thought of this idea you said so many great things and you could also do this so there really isn't a negative and i think that is what scares most of us from going to toast uh, to, to a table topic that what if things go wrong well they can't go wrong they can go great or people will tell you that they are great and if you come to manglo toast masters at least at the end of the day you get free breakfast so that is like maybe not for bus but it's still something uh coming to my professional life as a psychologist i have to talk to people that is my bread and butter and uh the the skills that i have gained here definitely help i would say it helps you connect to the other person because i am constantly looking at the other person seeing what they feel and then modifying my answers and i think that is a very important skill it's not about what you say it's about how you realize what the other person needs to hear and i think responding well is a skill that uh, table topic gives you and so you go there as a guest you go as a member if you attend a table uh, a to- toastmaster meeting definitely try the table topic it will be one of those choices on the menu that you have never tried before and you'll get so much yeah that's what i have to say uh and over to you toastmaster bavishya thank you toastmaster benzita yeah so this is how table topics are done in toastmaster meeting i would like to invite everyone to share their learnings from toastmasters um I first heard of Toastmasters when I was a student and it helped me focus uh, my thoughts and explore the leadership skills I thought I never had. Fast forward to 2021, I have joined Toastmasters recently as a professional and teaching the students at uh, at postgraduate level. It has uh, Toastmasters has helped me reach out to them in an effective manner. uh sharpen my skills communication and overall presentation and delivery toastmasters has helped me fine tune and organize my thoughts in a manner that can have a positive impact on the people and along with preparing a powerful speech i knew that evaluation and exploring different leadership roles like a grammarian or an evaluator um or general evaluator were my shortcomings as a student and i wanted to work on it when i recently joined toastmasters uh with the constant help and guidance from my mentor i am able to take up the roles although a little nervous i feel like i'm almost confident but i still have a long way to go to explore more in toastmasters over to you toastmaster princita uh my time with toastmasters began in about 12th standard when i attended another club's picnic meeting and back then when i was so stressed with exams and the future and everything the really fun and supportive environment at a toastmasters club really surprised me and i got very eager to join so i ended up joining manglo toastmasters club a couple of years back and it's been a wonderful experience since then so in addition to the obvious benefits of being a toastmaster like getting to know more new and different kinds of people i think my time at toastmasters uh, preparing and planning and delivering speeches has helped me improve at putting a thought into words and communicating it effectively a skill that came in very handy when i took up a part time job teaching science so i've understood the importance of sometimes saying something clearly or saying it in a fancy manner So in addition to these skills of communication I'm also currently serving as the vice president education at MTM which is giving me new insights about how things are run and is an opportunity to like learn to handle the responsibilities that come along with it but most of all I think the best part about toastmasters for me as a student has been the wholesome atmosphere at MTM and the chance to interact with 
fellow Toastmasters and learn and grow while also enjoying myself in a fun and supportive environment. What about you, Toastmaster, Sean? Toastmasters is, uh, for me, Toastmasters is a, is a way to stick to, uh, I mean, stay in touch with the English language. Since I'm in a condition where I speak in the local languages, which is Canada and Tulu, uh, like, uh, I don't have the opportunity like we had it back in school, where we talk in, talk in English. But here, I, I don't have such situations now. So for me, Toastmasters is a place where I can speak in English, listen to what other people are saying, like, you know. And uh, I remember our uh, president Toastmaster saying that, uh, you know, Sean, uh, even if you don't, even if you're not prepared, even if you uh, think that, even if you don't feel like coming, okay, you don't, you're not in the mood, but just plug in your ear, your plugs, and then join the meet. You know, you're going to get something. You're going to get new phrases, new words, whatever it is. But that is the encouragement you get here. Everybody's like motivating you, encouraging you. It's a very friendly environment here. So that is Toastmasters for me. It's just a platform where I can keep growing. Never stop growing. Yeah. Over to Toastmaster Fiona. I have benefited immensely from Toastmasters mentoring. Every push and nudge that I've got from my mentors at Mangalore Club, be it role taking, participating in contests, or taking a leadership role has opened up a world of opportunities for me. As before any big event, we feel the need to rehearse. You can rehearse and polish any and every skill you uh, way beyond Toastmasters, uh, way beyond the public speaking. Want to learn how to plan an event? Want to know how to debate? Want to publish your? Uh, want to publish a magazine? Do you want to polish your hosting skills? Do you want to see if people can tolerate your cooking? Experiment with Toastmasters, and the result will shock you. But if you're experimenting with food, then let's hope that the results will be not so shocking. Far more than the skills I have learned from Toastmasters. Toastmasters has given me a massive self-esteem boost, which has turned my world upside down. Over to you, Toastmaster Yonel. Uh, prior to joining Toastmasters, I used to take up trainings and address small audiences. At that point in time, I had to deal with two things, managing anxiety and the content. My energies would be directed towards dealing with my anxieties and the content delivery would suffer. In life, the only way to reduce anxiety is not to avoid it, but to walk through it. The more often you do it, the more, more confident you get. It's that simple, but of course not easy. In my opinion, Toastmasters is similar to net practice in cricket. For a match day like this, you need hours and hours of practice. Toastmasters gives you that platform and the practice. A couple of months back, during a felicitation of a family member by the Lions Club, the president gave me a notice of only two minutes to deliver the vote of thanks. I certainly felt anxious, but I had enough experience at table topics in Ghostmaster that I could easily direct my energies on framing and forming the content rather than managing my anxieties. So that's my that's been my experience at Toastmasters, and that's how I have benefited from this organization. Uh, Toastmaster Disha, what are your learnings? Uh, being one of the newest members of Toastmasters Club, I can tell you my experience there. I am somebody who used to do public speaking back in college days, and I had a break of many years in between. And only recently, when I had to go on stage to give an impromptu talk about the work I did in my laboratory did I realize that I had lost most of my skills and could not communicate my ideas through. And I was quite nervous. I knew I had to remove the rust of the bar. By joining Toastmasters, I realized that this was the perfect place to do that. As here, there are people at various levels of learning and everybody is very much ready to help you. Honestly, uh, Toastmasters feels like a classroom, but the classroom with your favorite teacher who is fun and makes the class very light. Trust me, all the senior Toastmaster members here are way more cooler than any of your Gen Z or millennial friends. Toastmaster Club has definitely boosted my enthusiasm and every day is a new learning. What do you have to say, Toastmaster Bhavishya? As I'm an IT professional, I need to interact with my teammates and clients and frames mail each day. That's why I decided to join Toastmaster. 
Learning is never ending process and every Toastmaster meeting will surely learn something new. It's been a month since I joined Toastmaster and I'm lo really loving the vibe it gives me whenever I attend the meeting. And the people in the team are really enthusiastic. I'm sure if you guys are part of Toastmasters, you'll surely love the experience. Over to you, Toastmaster Nidhi. Yeah, that is it. Uh, yeah, so for me, I uh, have been a member of Toastmasters across the world in different clubs. Um, I've been in Bangalore, Minneapolis, in the United States at Mangalore. And really there are two learnings that I would take out of, uh, of my uh, time in Toastmasters. And that number, firstly, is uh, to that Toastmasters teaches you how to get rid of your uh, hesitancy. So if you feel hesitate, hesitant in taking up roles, uh, practicing taking up roles will actually get uh, help you get build that confidence and you will be able to take up uh, roles which will benefit you in both your, in your professional and personal life. Uh, the second thing what uh, Toastmasters has really taught me is uh, that people are uh, not as harsh as you think they are. Uh, if you have that fear, uh, people at Toastmasters will gladly be able to give you advice. They will gladly laugh at your jokes even though they may not be funny. And, uh, in, and and sometimes they might offer an encouraging word when you most need it. Um, and that is what Toastmasters actually gives you. So it is to take life a lot more easier um, going forward. Uh, that, so that is what Toastmasters has taught me and what, what I've learned from Toastmasters. Yeah, over to Benzita to tell her what she's learned. Uh, thank you. And uh, this is hoping you all are still listening to us telling why you need to join in. Uh, what I would say is I have been someone who has loved to speak. I have been given speak, I've been giving speeches since childhood or school. And to those of you out there who feel I am good at this, I do speak. Well, here's the news for you. If you need to speak, you need a community that will listen. Over the course of years, what happened, I had my classmates, I had competitions, I had college where I could speak to someone. But then people get bored of listening to you talk and talk and talk. And then you move on to work where they just want you to submit the deadlines and nothing else. But you are still passionate about speaking and you are a good speaker. And Toastmasters would be that community where they are going to pay their membership fee. Turn up on time just to listen to you speak. And what bigger of an ego boost do you need? It will sharpen your ideas. You will get feedback. And there are also going to be people who will enjoy listening to you. And as someone who genuinely has a passion for public speaking, it is a very great community to join. It doesn't just make good speakers out of you. It makes good listeners. Look at the eight of them. They have heard my jokes at the recording. They have heard it when I have rehearsed it. And they are still listening so nicely. And still laughing like such an earnest audience. So it doesn't just make you good speakers. It makes you really, really effective listeners good listeners so let me tell you in toastmasters you can learn how to set an event how to talk how to listen you can do all of that but you can also get a circle that goes beyond that and adds to your life a network of people that you can reach out to at any point for anything that's what toastmasters has been for me personally and that is why i come back and i stay connected just like you have your youth community, this is similar and we would love to invite you here. And having shared all of our experiences, I hand it back to Toastmaster Sunita. Thank you all for sharing your experience. I'd like to add one of my own. Being an experienced Toastmaster can sometimes make you complacent. I've given so many speeches, evaluated so many speakers, and dived into so many table topics. But recently, one of my evaluators 
gave me the push I needed to wake up. She said, I score a tick mark on all the usual requirements, eye contact, voice modulation, body language, presentation. And then she paused and smiled and said very gently, now, why don't you challenge yourself and see what you can do to make yourself better, to take your skills to the next level? And I realized that is exactly what I need to work on now. Toastmasters is a community of like-minded people, just like the members of the ICYM. We have a common goal. We come together, we work together, we learn together, and we grow together. On behalf of Toastmasters International and fellow Toastmasters from my club, I welcome you to our community to share our experience and to allow us to benefit from sharing yours. Thank you.